Hi, I'm Wayne Scrabble with Lone Wolf Hot Rods. If a highly equipped car stumbles, bogs, or dies, it's no fun to drive, and it's likely embarrassingly slow. The accelerator pump circuit needs to be tuned, plain and simple. In the, in the process of tuning accelerator pump circuits, the carb float levels must be first correctly set, and ditto with the idle mixture and idle speed settings. Check out my Lone Wolf Hot Rods channel videos for these topics. When tuning, the first thing to establish is the accelerator pump arm clearance. Begin on the primary side. Start by ensuring the pump arm just touches the base of the operating screw. Right in there. If there is slack, adjust the nut here until there's zero clearance. Be certain the pump arm isn't being pushed up when you adjust the nut. Next, open the throttle wide open. Slide a 15 thousandths feeler gauge between the pump arm and the adjustment screw base, just like that. If the carburetor has a choke, ensure the fast idle cam lever is disengaged. If there is proper clearance, the pump arm will move down slightly when the feeler gauge is inserted. When you pull the feeler gauge out, you'll see the arm move up back a bit. The fit in the gauge should be slightly snug and you'll feel it drag when you move the blade back and forth. The reason for the clearance is to ensure the pump diaphragm is never stretched beyond the maximum limit at wide open throttle. If it's stretched too far, the diaphragm can fail. With a double pumper, repeat the process on the secondary side. The next step is to tune the accelerator pump discharge nozzles or shooters or squirters. Pump shooters are located here, there, in the main body of the carburetor in the venturi area. They're typically fastened by way of a screw. Conventional uh, shooters use Phillips head screw. Hollow shooters use a flat blade screw. I'll address the screws a little bit later. Shooters are used to tune off-the-line acceleration. If the initial acceleration produces a hesitation and then picks up, the shooter size must be increased. In certain cases, the accelerator pump shooter may be so small, so lean, that the engine will backfire during acceleration. If the shooter is too large, the off-idle acceleration will not be crisp or clean. Sometimes, the car will launch cleanly, but then nose over. That's an indication the shooter is too large. It will often create a puff of black smoke during acceleration. Obviously, in this instance, the shooter must be replaced with a smaller, leaner example. A very common tuning misconception is an engine with a bog or hesitation just off idle. Novices often tend to think the bob was created by excess fuel, so they lean out the jetting of the carburetor. This is wrong. Although it may initially appear like far too much carburetion, the bog was actually created by too little fuel. A hole has developed in the fuel curve. Too much air is allowed into the engine as the throttle is cracked open, and there's insufficient fuel to cover up that air hole. The fix is straightforward. You keep increasing the accelerator pump shooter size until the bog is cured. Shooter selection is primarily a trial and error job that's tuned by experimenting. And since all modified cars have characteristics that separate them from similar cars, it's almost impossible to use the same tune-up as your closest buddy or competitor. Holly offers many shapes and sizes of, of shooters and configurations. The, the two high-performance jobs are like these and include the, the tube discharge models and the, and the straight-end discharge jobs. Although quite different in overall appearance, there's not a huge difference in the performance of either shooter configuration. However, some folks feel the tube style here offer a bit more of an advantage in that you can target the fuel directly towards the boosters. All shooters are stamped with a number from 25 through 52. The stamped in number indicates the drill size of the shooter orifice. While jets cannot and should never be redrilled, shooters are another matter. Redrilling the orifice size with a pin vise drill is common practice, however the numbering system gets thrown away, hence the need to measure the, the drill size. Drill them if you prefer, but always remember to physically check the orifice size prior to installation. And by the way, it's easier to drill those than it is the tube style. Once shooter size is increased beyond a number 36 to number 38, it's a good idea to switch to a hollow shooter screw kit, just like this on the right. This setup allows increased fuel flow to the pump shooter, ensuring that the limiting restriction in the accelerator pump system is in fact the shooter, not the screw. Keep in mind that beneath each shooter is a check valve needle. If you happen to flip the carb upside down while the shooter is removed, this needle might fall out. When changing the pump shooter, I prefer to move three sizes at a time. 
For example, if the engine hesitates with a number 28 shooter, try a number 31 shooter. Once you get closer to optimum, you can start fine tuning. If you end up needing a, a, a number 37 or a larger shooter, then it's time to step up to a 50cc accelerator pump assembly. The standard accelerator pump has a 30cc capacity. Pump capacity is determined by collecting the amount of fuel produced by 10 full strokes of the pump. As a result, each stroke of a standard pump delivers 3 cc's of fuel, while each stroke of a real pump, such as this one, delivers 5 cc's of fuel. There's more here too. The larger the carb flow in relation to the engine displacement and engine speed, the more need for a larger pump shot. The further the carburetor is away from the intake valve, for example in the tunnel ram application, the more you need a larger pump shot. A good example is a, is a heavily modified engine, especially one that has to haul around a heavy car with a tall axle ratio. It can sometimes develop a severe stumble. If tuning such as increasing the shooter size or revising the pump cam timing uh, doesn't work, then, then you should use a 50cc Rio kit. This kit from Hawley includes the, the body, special diaphragm, the special arm, the unique cams, and all the mounting hardware. When installed, it should easily solve the stumble. By the way, it's actually quite common to use a, a real kit on both the primary and secondary side of the carburetor in automatic transmission drag race applications. When using a 50cc kit, always check the clearance between the pump and the intake manifold. There. Sometimes you have to lightly grind the intake. In other cases, you might be forced to use a small carb spacer in order to find the clearance. With a double pumper, keep in mind the secondary shooters and the pump capacity must be correctly sized to supply fuel for a sufficient length of time so that secondary jets can begin to deliver fuel once the secondary throttle plates are open. That's why you'll often find big 50cc pumps just like this on the second si secondary side of, of large CFM double pumpers. One thing to keep in mind is this, though. Even though I've discussed the use of, use of much larger shooters, when all is said and done, I still like to use the smallest shooter I can get away with on a carburetor. Once the shooters have been selected, you can move to pump cam tuning. Holly offers an assortment of pump cams, right there, part number 20-12, each with a uniquely different lift and duration profile. Brown and yellow pump cams, like those, are for use with 50cc pumps, while the other color-coded cams can be used with standard 30cc pumps. Swapping cams has a direct effect upon the movement of the accelerator pump lever, and as a result, the timing and to a lesser degree, the amount of fuel available at the shooter. Accelerator pump cams are the same as any other camshaft. They can have a different lift and duration profile built into them. A cam with a steep nose profile provides strong pump action and quicker pressure rise immediately. A softer nose cam profile has the opposite effect. Installing a pump cam is simple. It's as easy as loosening this screw, placing the new pump cam next to the throttle lever and tightening it up. Each pump cam has one and two, and in some cases three, such as the pink one here, holes numbered with a, with a one and a two and sometimes a three. 50cc pump cams have a single hole in them. Installing the screw in the number one position activates the accelerator pump a little early. If you have a mild combination that idles at lower speeds, say 600 to 700 RPM, you'll find that position number one is beneficial. That's because it will have a decent pump shot coming right off idle. Positions number two and number three delay the pump shot slightly. They're better suited for engines idling at 1000 RPM and beyond. When those positions are used, they allow for the extra throttle opening required to maintain higher RPM idle speeds. Once you change the pump cam or change the pump cam, cam position, you should recheck the pump arm clearance right there. And that's it. Tuning Holly accelerator pump circuits really isn't that difficult. You can do it. Stay tuned to Lone Wolf Hot Rods for more tuning videos and high performance tech. Point your browser to racingjunk.com for endless tech. And please subscribe. That's what makes the channel go around.